All right, so uh, for the Royal Rumble wrestling lesson, we all know about the general effects like how many ways, who made the paper, who made the match itself, and, you know, the amount of winners. But there are, I think there are a couple of other facts that are harder to maybe find nor people care about. And one of them that I really want to talk about um, at first is for decades, because this uh, pay-per-view started in 1988. It's a very old pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And for decades... No city has hosted the Royal Rumble more than once up until 2007. So the first year was the 1997 Royal Rumble that happened in San Antonio, and it took until 2007 to repeat uh, the same city. And I think Philadelphia and uh, New, Ar uh, New Orleans are the other two cities. But other than that, they've all been hosted in different places. Interesting. Um, and that one was really cool. But the 2015 and 2004 event also made history. There, I don't know why my ice does that. So the 2004 one was in the Wachovia Center. But... The 2015 one was in the Wells Fargo Center. Mm -hmm. It's the same physical building, different name. Mm -hmm. So I thought that one was kind of interesting. And that is the only time that is something like that has ever happened. To, to uh, the Royal Rumble. To, to the Royal Rumble. These are both Royal Rumble things. And it was like, oh, that's kind of neat. So let's talk about Sheamus. Because Sheamus, if he won the Royal Rumble tonight, he also would have made history of winning a match like this to the day a decade apart his 2012 royal rumble win was on january 29th of 2012 and today is january 29th 2022 mm -hmm. so if he won this match that would have been really cool but i didn't even know that he won this match in st louis and they were also in st louis I'll be honest with you, I kind of wish he won it based on those circumstances. That would have been <laughs> – right. I think that would have been really cool, and I think it would have been something – I just don't know if that we can recreate something like that. Right. The only other person who was actually in this match who could have done something like this – actually, no, there were two people who could have done this who were in this match, ironically. Rey Mysterio. Could have done the same thing because he won it on January 29th in 2006. And Randy Orton could have done this as well because he won it on the 29th in 2017. But Sheamus is a little cooler because it was literally It was in the years. same city. And also it was 10 years apart, almost to the T. So that would have been really neat. So Cora Jade, obviously an NXT girl. But if she entered this Royal Rumble... She would have been the youngest female to enter it at just 20 years old, but she would not have been the youngest participant in the Royal Rumble ever. That goes to Renee Dupree, who in 2004 entered the Royal Rumble at 19. Jesus. So uh, Renee Dupree like was signed in like 18 years old. He was really right. young. I don't think people realize how young that guy was because he looks like he was in 30s so Dolph Ziggler they didn't mention it during the show but I think it's something to bring up again Dolph Ziggler has appeared in 15 consecutive Royal Rumbles he has never missed a year since his debut as Dolph Ziggler in 2009 nice so I think that's really a testament to how not only good Dolph Ziggler is but his um his dedication to this business, and I think it's really cool. I think it would have been really neat to at least have him in some sort of Final Four, but, you know, he's really doing nothing at this point. Edge is the only and first Hall of Famer to win the Royal Rumble as a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. And obviously that was in 2012 when he won it the second time. Or 2021. I said 2021. No, you said 2012. Did I say 2012? Yeah, I said did. 2021. No, you said 2012. Maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, it was 2021. <sighs> Mr. Vince McMahon, in 1999, he won the Royal Rumble. But he spent the least amount of time in this match. He entered it number two, and he won the match by eliminating Stone Cold Steve Austin. 
he was in the match physically in the ring for less than 15 minutes. Out of a 45 to 50 minute match, he was there. He went underneath the ring. He kind of moseyed around. He hopped on commentary for a while up until the very end when the Stooges were trying to help McMahon and McMahon threw Stone Cold over the top because that's what happened. Obviously, it was a really bad choice because, you know, it was Vince McMahon. Much different Vince McMahon than now. That would have been insane if he won it now. You can barely figure out what he can do, you know, for breakfast. He'll just change the script all of a sudden. Right. So, Randy Orton. A two-time winner made history by spending the most time in the match without eliminating anybody. Hmm. This was the 2019 Rumble when he was with the Wyatt family and he was protecting Bray Wyatt. He spent uh, just under 21 minutes before eliminating anybody Hmm. in the match. So that was kind of cool. And obviously he went and had that really bad match with Bray. So let's talk about, uh, oh, God, did I change the, oh, whoops, huh. totally wrong picture. There we go. So uh, there, have, there has only been one champion that has gone into the Royal Rumble match and won it. Hmm. And obviously, this was the 1990 Royal Rumble. The WWF champion was on the line, and Hulk Hogan was the world champion. And he won it. Now, what about the uh, what about the uh, Rumble where the Universal or the WWE World Roman Reigns did not win it. Oh, okay. So the winner the winner was a champion going into it. All right. Okay. The the person who went who won those champions was not the champion going into it. Right. So and there has been no and there has been no champion United States Intercontinental Tag Team. None of them have won a Royal Rumble match. As a champion, only Hulk Hogan has. Interesting. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of a neat one. So, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the first Royal Rumble winner in 1988. He did not enter another Royal Rumble until 2009. Jesus. It was the longest spell of a Royal Rumble participant ever. 21 years from his last appearance. Roddy Roddy Piper and Jimmy Snuka... Tied for second with 16 years. They appeared in the 1992 Rumble, and they returned in the 2008. Interesting. And finally, there have been a plethora of people who have eliminated themselves Mm -hmm. from the Royal Rumble. And obviously, the most famous one was this guy right here, uh, which, if I can move my head the correct way, it's a Mil Moscaris. Mm -hmm. Because heaven forbid anybody hurts or pins or throws Mil Moscaris over the top rope. Right. Um, I would, I mean, I might do a uh, career retrospective on Mil Moscaris because we have stories about this asshole for decades. <laughs> so, there have been 12 people who have eliminated themselves from the Royal Rumble, either accidentally or intentionally, for one reason or another. These people are Andre the Giant, Randy Savage, Farouk, Anman Johnson, Mil Moscaris, Kane, Drew Carey. Mick Foley, MVP, Matt Hardy, and Santina Morella from the Women's Royal Rumble. Huh, interesting. When, when, you know, she was in the Rumble. Right. So those are just a couple of different facts that I thought were the most interesting. There were a bunch of them. There was a lot of information about the Royal Rumble. Because, you know, keep in mind of how old this... Right. You know, how old this match is from 1988. They've never missed a year, and then there have been years for the last, what, five that have had two. Right, at so, least two. You're right. At the very least two with the Women's Royal Rumble being coming into play. So uh, this is really cool to think. And I'm sitting here, I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, man, we might need to do career retrospectives. I might talk about Mil Moscaris because I love stories about Mil Moscaris. <laughs> so when we return, we're not only going to make the Royal Rumble or an and WWE Majestic, but we're going to make pro wrestling Majestic again. <laughs> 